Before we get to the news today, I just wanted to talk to you about the video that I uh, just uh, did, what, about a week ago? And it kind of became one of the most popular videos this year. I didn't really expect it. It got picked up by uh, uh, Tesla Roddy, Inside EVs, and a few other publications. And um, there, the, you guys had a, a, a few questions, uh, and, and I tried answering one of them yesterday, but I keep getting more and more and more. So I just wanted to address some of the, you know, basic information um, that you guys are requesting in your comment section and we get to some exciting news. So let's get going right now. If you are watching this live on Patreon, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining me live. Of course, submit your questions in the chat. If you're watching this on replay on YouTube, Please consider subscribing so you become a part of this community and don't miss anything moving forward. Okay, so I just did this video where I interviewed uh, pretty much one of the first two Tesla customers for the solar roof product. Um, and uh, here's a house right here. Uh, you can find the link. Uh, it's a featured video on my channel right now. There's a link in the description of this video. You can watch the whole thing. I, I did some drone footage and, 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 and close up and everything. Um, so you can see it all. But there were a lot of questions about kind of a technical specs, you know, and like how much does it cost? how much output is, is making and so forth and I um, just kind of wanted to address some of this. First of all, uh, the house, just like I mentioned in the video, has not been connected to the grid yet. So we don't really know what it is. Uh, asking about the expected outcome is a little bit I mean, we don't want to speculate, right? So we, I'm going to stay in touch with the owner if he's kind enough to address this with me when he has time uh, and, and, and will. Uh, I will definitely do that and we'll let you guys know. And he has, I believe, three power packs, as you can see in the video, power walls, uh, where he's going to be storing the energy. So we'll get a better idea of what the output is. As you know, so don't forget, this is a solar roof. This is solar panels. It depends on a lot of different things. Uh, uh, angle to the sun, how much sun it's actually getting, uh, depending on the weather. Um, the, 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 the shadows from the trees and the neighboring trees and, and so forth. As you can see, there uh, a, a couple around in, in, in the picture that I took. So um, this is, you know, this is a lot of, there is a lot of stuff to, to, to consider. So until it actually happens, we won't know. Now, yes, it is very unfortunate that it takes about two months. That's what he mentioned in the video to connect to the uh, uh, grid. Now, I'm assuming this is something that's going to get fixed or at least uh, a more uh, a streamlined. Uh, here we have PG&E uh, in, uh, in, in the Bay Area, and I'm, I'm assuming it's new to them as well. Um, just like, you know, people say, well, you know, it's 20 people to do this in two weeks. Okay, I know I made a joke in the video, but the thing is he explained that one, it was raining, right? So any construction will be halted during the rain so or, or make it much harder. Secondly, don't forget, they're, they're doing this pretty much for the first time and trying to train people. So this is actually pretty freaking fast, if you ask me. And again, don't forget, they're not just laying the shingles on top of the existing roof they're tearing down the roof and putting a new roof on top of that and this is one of the another uh you know sort of cost benefit analysis we need to understand that this is a new roof and this roof is um actually a, a, a more it has a lifetime warranty right and it's uh you know they have some videos on their website where it's very much hail resistant so you know that means also other crap falling on your house, maybe including part of the tree or, you know, whatever that falls on your house that's going to uh, not have as many leaks in the roof that the traditional roof would have. So you're getting a better quality roof. Now, are you going to uh, sort of, you have to put in a cost benefit analysis because it is something that you're getting. And then again, once we know what the output is for the energy and you will never know what it's going to be for your house, they can do an estimate, but you won't really know um, uh, until this whole thing takes off and, and the estimators are going to be much more precise uh, of what your benefit is going to be. Now, he mentioned, the owner mentioned in, in, in the video, again, please feel free to watch it, is that um, it is... It is something that uh, you may not get your money worth up front, right? This is just kind of a, a relatively expensive proposition. But at the same time, if you want the solar energy, but you don't want your house to look, you know, some people consider it ugly where you have a regular roof and then you have like, you know, uh, uh, solar panels kind of like on top of it. And it's uh, sometimes in a very weird order because they're trying to maximize the solar power of, of your property. Um, then it's, you know, then how much money is it worth for you to, for your house to look good or better than it otherwise would. So all of this stuff is just really hard to tell. Now, you can go to 
tesla.com slash solar roof and a lot of that information there but you will also find that it's pretty vague right it's pretty vague about how much uh, uh you know is going to cost in construction because everyone is different as you can see there's another house that uh um got the this uh roof as one of the first customers and it also looks very simple right i was wondering how come it's not a humongous mansion or whatever well obviously tesla is trying to test it in a, a simple configuration right where it's easy to you know easy to put down in there and install and uh, obviously easy to collect the sun um the more complicated roof the more complicated property that you have is going to have uh obviously higher costs and maybe lower costs of the um how much energy you're going to be getting out of it right okay so so that's one thing um well or many things that you guys been asking um also some people are asking why there are fake shingles there why is fake tiles okay so here's the thing not every single tile there is a, an actual solar panel uh you know it depends on how much of like how many solar panels like when you install like solar panels, right, you tell them how much, how many solar panels you need for the power output of your house and so forth. Same here. So they can't just uh, um, make it magically so your entire roof is all uh, 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 solar tiles and they are giving you the output exactly what you want. I mean, they're basically going to lay them out, the ones that are collecting the energy in according to what your needs are. And then the rest... You know they just make the fake ones so they look like the rest of them so do you, do you understand so it's, I, I hope i make myself clear um so but there there are there are real ones that collect the energy they're, they're the fake ones for the look so the whole thing looks nice and slick i hope i'm i made i'm making sense um so that's the answer to that now just like i said i will follow up with him if he's gracious enough to uh, let me do the follow-up i will do that so uh we're gonna leave it up to that now continue submitting your comments i mean i'm just trying to answer the mo most common ones but i'll come back to this uh topic and again and again because um you know apparently my roof video did better than any of my electric car videos on an electric car youtube channel so i'm a little confused okay by the way let me know i got a bunch of stuff that i have a, a lot of different opinions about different tech including my google phone and so forth let me know if you guys are interested in in maybe uh, me doing a different report on different tech i'd be i'd be definitely uh interested in doing that all right let me remind you that this uh, video and this channel is sponsored by evanex uh the aftermarket accessories for your tesla and i actually Oh, I should probably reach here. I, I just got this in the mail today. So this is a roadside assistant kit from them. I'm going to set it right here and uh, uh, I'm going to review this. And maybe I'll just do like an unboxing or whatever live. But I'm definitely uh, excited about this one. Probably should get one for another car. Um, anyway, the uh, discount code, if you're looking to uh, buy one of these or anything else there, um, is in the description of this video specifically for this community all right let's move on to some tesla news uh the tesla has extended the referral program like we all knew they would um you know i never really liked this program before and i think i even like it less now uh they kind of uh, uh, kept everything the same i think they took away the 500 dollar um incentive i don't know why uh, they reshuffled the prizes a little bit so um I still understand why they whether or not you refer one customer or two you get the same price as a matter of fact when you refer one you get nothing you refer two then you get to choose one of the two prizes weird uh and uh i think the third uh the third referral now gets you the solar roof uh token right so basically you put get put in front of everybody else um to get the solar roof but that kind of assumes that you know they're giving you a right to spend a bunch of money on their product assuming you own your house and so forth much like you know the tesla toy car for kids where it originally was in its own tier uh was useless to people like me who don't have kids or who have kids that are can't fit in there anymore they're over the age of two um uh, they they did keep the by the way they did keep the free supercharging thing which i quite don't really understand anymore because i feel like with uh everybody else with other uh networks that are coming out there ionity and so forth they are actually uh going to charge everybody and that kind of makes sense at this point i don't think too many people are going to complain not really sure why they're putting more and more burden on themselves and uh maybe more people uh taking advantage of it so i'm i don't i don't like that either i think at this point super supercharging should be at the low cost that they're providing um and it's I, i'm not really sure if it's going to uh be in trouble in the future but i i don't like anything about referral program of course the the semi-truck racing thing is still in there i know i tried to participate but i figured you know what i i i i'm i'm, I'm not gonna promote tesla for the sake of going there even though i really wanted to go there to make a video for you guys i just don't think it's fair 
to advertise them every time just so maybe I can win the lottery. If they want to invite me, sure. If not, I think I'll live and you guys live without it. So um, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. All right, let me move on with um, an, in uh, other news. Uh, so Nissan has reached 100,000 uh, cars sold, Nissan Leafs. Uh, in just Japan, and that's kind of a premier market for them. Uh, they've been selling a lot of them, and it's been adding to more and more numbers globally that they're selling on this car. I have to say that I've now seen two uh, Nissan Leafs on the road here, which is like uh, probably 50 times less than I've seen Model 3s on here, which is surprising, you know, because they are kind of available now. People are getting them, um, so I'm a little surprised where they are on the road because there should be kind of almost equal amount of them at some point, maybe about a month ago, it should have been an equal amount. So I'm confused why I don't see them um, uh, as much as possible, but kudos for their sales. Now, uh, they're claiming that they are going to, um, uh, they're going to uh, come up with three more. I mean, we kind of knew this. I don't know why they announced it again. They're, they're, they're targeting three more uh, uh, battery powered electric cars by 2022, which is kind of, you know, they have the technology now. Uh, a, a two out of three of them are going to be uh, based on this concept that I absolutely love. This is the picture I took myself at CES uh, with my cell phone, actually. Um, this is their uh, SUV uh, crossover uh, uh, IMX. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, but at the same time, they're a little bit disappointing because they said that uh, most of the vehicles are going to be, I think they're calling the e-power, which is just a BS name for a real hybrids, like gas-powered hybrids, not a plug-in hybrids. So I'm really, really sure why they're going in that direction. I know they have to meet a lot of requirements in California and in China and so forth for like electric, uh, uh, electric car powertrains, but this is not even going to make some of those requirements, I think. So I'm a little confused. I'm confused on the timing and sort of the kind of a, a, a desire to stick with a, with a gas powered essentially car. Now, another thing that they did do is they released this upgrade of this um, uh, ENV 200 van. Now it used to go, I think about a hundred miles per charge, but at the end of the year, they're going to be start selling them and the new range is 174 or nine, something not bad. Um, you know, just to compare it to the Mercedes, they just came out of a very similar van, uh, maybe a little bit bigger, but that one has like a 80 mile range. Um, so it, obviously they have the technology. Why not? Why not give it to us? We, we want it. Um, anyway, so that I thought it was a little bit weird. Okay, let's move on to another news. And by the way, I just wanted to thank you guys for watching this live on Patreon. Of course, ask me questions. Um, and uh, as you usually do, I answer them live. Uh, and, and if you want to join the description of this video, of course, has a link. It's patreon.com slash e for electric. Um, all right, let's move on to other news. E, uh, oh, e, Audi e-tron. Uh, is you, they keep they keep having it in a camouflage. Not sure why. Um, I think we all kind of know what it's going to look like. It's not like it's a breakthrough design, uh, but they're keeping it in camouflage. They released a video today, and I'll show it to you guys for this time without the sound. <laughs> but um, nothing new, nothing impressive. But they're now confirming their range, which is like they used to claim it's going to be 310 miles. Now I think they're claiming it's going to be about 248 miles, and that seems like a more of a realistic range now this is going to be the first car in the market check this out i think this is a bigger news that people are making it out to be but uh, this is the first car in the market that's going to be able to fast charge at 150 kilowatt um and that's the ionity network that um uh the parent company in audi volkswagen group uh, is um investing into uh, and, and they just built their first uh, uh, fast charging st station in Germany, as reported yesterday. I did forget to report that it is going to be free for the rest of, I think, this month and maybe next month, but for the next month for people to use. So that's that's pretty cool. By the way, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Um, another, um, so you, as you know, there's a Beijing Auto Show going on, and I'm hoping to make it there by Tuesday. Still waiting on my visa is kind of weird i don't know if i'm going to go but if i am i'm going to report on this but bmw um, is teasing in their ix3 that's coming out they're going to unveil it's still a concept you know not a prototype of concept and this is the best like this is they only released this video on instagram and um this is all we get this is the this is a preview shot of that i could have taken it out of any 10 year old BMW really out, out outside of my uh, window but nevertheless this is this is their teaser they're saying this car is going to have up to 200 miles. 
Wow, up to 200 mile range. Wow, this is what a breakthrough. Seriously, BMW, I, 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 I know this is better than an i3, <laughs> but that's not saying much. You guys got to be ahead of the curve. At least lie maybe a little bit to us at this point. You know, like Audi just did, right? Said 310 is really like under 250, but you know, 200 is something we're expecting for sure. Um, so, well, let's see what they actually going to say. Let's see what it's going to look like. I. It looks like it's not going to look any different from their regular BMW fleet, which is a good thing, actually. I think that's a good thing at this point. So uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that. Uh, by the way, uh, so um, this uh, uh, tomorrow, really, I'm going to release my interview with a CEO of Byton and also a VP of marketing, uh, um, uh, Karsten. Well, Karsten is the CEO. Uh, Henrik is a VP of marketing. I'm just going to throw it in for free. No problem. Um, uh, just uh, interviewed them at Milan during the Milan Design Week. I just came there from Italy. It was a great time. And I'm going to release another video, just kind of a coverage of that event and some other interesting interviews with actually a, a race a car or sports car a YouTube host uh, that had an interesting view on, on electric cars. So I'll, I'll feature that as well. Um, all right, let's get to the comment of the day. Um, uh, it's, it's, again, I apologize. I can't answer all the comments. I'm going to answer as many a, a, as I can, especially if I'm in China, it's going to really slow that down. But um, this is kind of incorporates quite a few different comments. So this particular, particular one comes from uh, Jay De La Cruz. Um, and this is about, uh, um, Electrify America, the Volkswagen punishment network, really a punishment for them, definitely benefit to us, uh, putting their uh, fast charging networks in about 100 Walmarts, at least that's the deal that they made. I wasn't quite sure if that's the right target audience for them, you know, uh, again, a lot of these electric cars, especially that can take fast charging are, you know, 80 to 150 thousand dollar cars not really sure they're a walmart customers and i was also mentioning that walmart's you know not always like you have to put that network at uh, along the highways the most common routes right that's where people need to fast charge not while they're shopping at walmart well um it looks like uh and and you know i'm not going to read this uh specific comment but this is one of the comments that are saying that you know walmart's are actually along well, I guess I am going to <laughs> read it there's a lot of walmart's along highway routes he says or she says uh, uh, this is a good idea, especially if they want to sell the concept to more people. Yeah, this is actually not bad because yes, pe more people will be exposed and say, no, look, there are electric uh, car charging stations. So if I consider getting one, well, I know where the charging station is. So granted, uh, I stand corrected there. But, um, you know, and if, uh, listen, we, we have like three Walmarts in the whole area where I live here and I don't think any of them are near the freeways. No, yeah, one of them, yeah. So if they are near the freeways and if this is a place where you can, you know, the shop or, or grab something to eat, I think a lot of times there's a McDonald's or Starbucks inside. So that, yes, I stand corrected. As long as they're specifically chosen Walmarts at the destinations uh, where people uh, need to charge, fast charge, and that definitely would be a good idea. So I'm going to go ahead and say kudos then to them if that's true all right i think i'm pretty much done here but don't forget tomorrow biden's interview uh, i'm going to be gone tomorrow so this is going to be obviously pre-recorded from milan i'm going to be gone to go to the my tesla adventure with eli if you guys still want to join us we're going to meet at the uh one of the biggest superchargers in the united states uh in the kettleman city uh on saturday tomorrow and then we're going to all drive to avila beach i think there's like a lot of teslas uh if you want to join us i think there are still spots left don't quote me on that ask eli um and i'll bring that report to you guys next week and i'll have an interview with him and maybe a couple of other people but um uh, it was a tesla takeover.com uh go there i think it's a 50 dollar per vehicle fee but it's very well worth it just for and there are hotels at a discounted rates so contact him we're going to have some fun hopefully i'll see you guys uh um there tomorrow and i'll report on that and of course on sunday we'll have our hangout and a and a recap as well so that's my time uh again i am uh excited about everything's going on and i'll let you guys know if i'm going to end up going to the beijing auto show um all right that's my time i'll see you tomorrow and of course remember to stay charged